If you thought the season is over, you're wrong. In fact, the real drama has only just begun. Now that team principals are less concerned about being cautious during the season not to tell anyone about their secret plans, and now that drivers with ended contracts are free to speak up against their team, the time has come to really get into the huge drama that's blowing up in the Formula 1 community. And who is it better to start with than our favourite Italian in the sport? We're of course talking about Mattia Bonotto, who has just announced some shocking details that made the F175 much slower than its competition, and made Leclerc risk losing his second place in the Drivers' Championship. So buckle up everyone, because this is going to be a fun story. So let's begin right away. It's safe to say that this wasn't Ferrari's best season ever, nor was it close to it. After a great start to the season, the team started falling back from its competitors a bit. And race by race, they lost almost all of the positions they'd gained in the Drivers' Championship. And what was the most frequent reason for that? Simple, reliability. Ferrari started out this season in the best way possible, not because they necessarily had the fastest car, nor the fastest drivers, but because Red Bull was struggling a lot to get the reliability of their components right. Now it's always funny to think about the two DNFs Max Verstappen did at the beginning of the season, when we were still thinking that Red Bull had the unreliable car. The truth is that after the two incidents the Austrian team had with fuel flow, they managed to fix everything, getting the fastest possible engine from the fourth race of the season onwards, getting a huge advantage over teams which were still looking for the limit their power units could reach. And one of those teams was Ferrari. They got the right engine at the start of the season, but they forgot to think about the long term. So, in the mid-season, despite their comfortable lead in the Drivers' Championship, Red Bull slowly started to chip away points as the Maranello team kept having DNFs due to the mechanical problems. Yes, they were fast at the beginning of the season, but they soon realised that the edge they had over their competitors wasn't going to last, as in fact it mostly came down to their power unit, which they produced in-house. To give you an idea of how bad this really was, eight races in, Leclerc had two blown-up engines and one already used enough to be completely useless in the future. Eight races in. This was incredibly bad. It means that every engine couldn't even do three races. And taking up a grid drop following an internal combustion engine replacement after just nine races is even worse. So, Ferrari did a cheeky move that not only allowed them to get their engines to six races each from that point onwards, but it also made them lose both championships. Yes, you heard that right. While us fans were cheering out here, inside Ferrari headquarters, they'd already given up. But what did they do to be precise? Well, they simply turned the engine power down. What this meant was less power compared to Red Bull, which had developed their new kind of engines incredibly well, but also meant that they were able to spend less on remaking the same component over and over again. Then, when at Spa, Charles Leclerc had taken his fifth engine of the season, and when the TD39 regulation was introduced, things started going downhill fast. Ferrari hasn't won a single race since, between the fact that they now had to use stiffer suspension to avoid getting a penalty for too much porpoising, meaning they also lost time in the corners where they usually gained it over competitors. And due to the fact that they had to preserve their new components like newborn children, they were forced to not push as much. So, while Red Bull was developing their car more and more, Ferrari wasn't even playing catch-up. They were just trying to survive in their little Italian ecosystem. So even though we know this, how is it possible the team ended up being so bad? Well, apparently the team values more being reliable than competitive. According to Mattia Bonotto's words during an interview with The Race, talking about engine reliability, that's our top priority because in order to win, you need to be reliable, and that has not been the case in the season, as a balance of the season itself. So for once, this is the reason, a team which prefers not taking huge risks like Red Bull did at the beginning of the season to find the limit of what for them is truly possible. The second reason might also have to do with race pace, as in qualifying, they've always found themselves comfortable, often getting pole positions but not managing to have dominant races, due to tyre degradation and bad strategy calls. So that was why at the beginning of the season, they were trying to use the engines to their fullest potentials, to compensate for other things. But, as we've seen with Red Bull, the same is true with high reliability cars. If you have a car which isn't necessarily the fastest, but the most reliable, you can be sure it will perform under pretty much every circumstance, getting essential points in situations where otherwise the car would have struggled a lot. Like when the driver has to start last after taking new components and doesn't win the race or finish high where he needs to. On more technical sides of things, there are other important reasons to Ferrari's unexpected downfall. More important of all is their turbo. 
Compared to other car manufacturers on the grid, Ferrari has a relatively small turbo. And while it gives an advantage in acceleration after corners, it also means that the turbo has to spin at a much higher RPM to keep up with other turbos. This means that it also requires a lot of air to work properly, and we know that in Formula 1, nothing, not even air, is to be taken for granted. In fact, we've seen problems with the turbo struggling to breathe in some conditions, and most evident being the Mexican Grand Prix. Since the Hermanos Rodriguez racetrack is over 2,200 meters over sea level, it means that not only is it technically a race in the mountains, but also a race with low air pressure, meaning less air to cool the car, get downforce, and, as you probably already predicted, get the turbo to work correctly. Just to understand how bad this problem really is, look at the differences between wings at Monza and in Mexico. Even though the ones in Mexico are much bigger, the air pressure here is so low that the top speed ever recorded in a Formula 1 car was here, and not at circuits with less downforce. Getting back on track, this issue with air meant that Ferrari had to turn the turbo a bit slower, and not to damage all the other components on the car, they had to slow those down too, as they couldn't have worked normally if the turbo didn't provide the air it was supposed to. This means that they had to willingly run a slow car, and as you probably remember, it didn't end up very well. They were far away from Mercedes and Red Bull in terms of race pace, while their two drivers were fighting at the top of the midfield and looking at their chances of getting a good finish in the championship running away from them. So, is Ferrari going to stick with this logic in 2023? Sadly, yes, and that's pretty much assured. We've heard Bonotto say in his interview that they will be focusing more on having a reliable car rather than a fast but unreliable one. This means that if Ferrari plays its cards right and manages to avoid grid penalties for the season, it could give them a huge advantage. But sadly, I don't see that happening anytime soon. First of all, Ferrari's power units are known to be fast but unreliable, and this will surely not change overnight. And even if the team's engineers magically made a new kind of engine that's really reliable, they're going to find other problems in areas they thought were fine. For example, after the TD39 porpoising regulation changes, not only did the team use a slower power unit, but also had to make suspension stiffer, meaning they lost time pretty much everywhere, while Red Bull had an important advantage in suspension redesigning. So getting a new kind of engine is not going to stop the problems in the team like all the bad strategy calls and the huge amount of tyre degradation that car has. I really hope for a Ferrari comeback in the next few years, but man, how unlikely that seems is incredible. So, what do you think? Should Ferrari fire Bonotto once and for all and change its way of thinking? What is the best way for the team to be competitive right now? Let us know with a comment below and don't forget to subscribe, because at 10,000 subscribers, we're going to try and get inside of the Ferrari F1 team to really understand what the problem is in there. No, not really, but you should subscribe anyway.